Hey everybody, welcome back to day 20 of our 30 day ECG challenge. And remember, we're building for every single day. So ideally, with every video, you get a little nugget of information that you can build and build and build and build. And today we've got a really fun ECG that we're gonna go over. It's the accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Say that three times fast and I'm sure that you would have a, a fun time. So accelerated, meaning faster than normal, Idioventricular, idioventricular, meaning within the ventricles, right? So this is a accelerated rhythm from within the ventricles, but it's obviously not a tachycardia, because remember tachycardia is rhythms that are greater than 100 beats per minute. So let's talk about what makes this AIVR for short, AIVR. So I scan through the rhythm. I notice that I have a regularly occurring rhythm here, nice and regular. Doesn't seem too fast, doesn't seem too slow. If I look, I notice that uh, my rate, if I find a QR that lands on a solid line, maybe like this one, my rate's gonna be 300, 150, 175, that's 60. So maybe we'll call this 65 beats per minute. So that's a regular rate and it's, uh, or it's a normal rate at a regular rhythm. But I notice that my QRS complexes are very wide. We have a wide QRS. Remember, this means my QRS is greater than 120 milliseconds, or three small boxes. And so I'm like, well, maybe this wide QRS is a bundle branch block, right? Maybe this is just a sinus rhythm with a bundle branch block. But I look in front of my QRS complexes, and I don't see P waves, right? So it doesn't seem like P waves are driving this rhythm. I can look in other leads, too, to make sure. Usually V1 has nice spiky P waves. And then I'm like, well, maybe, huh, this is interesting. Let's see if we have a typical bundle branch block morphology. Well, I look up in V1. I don't see an R, S, R prime that makes me think of a right bundle branch block. I look at my lateral leads, V5, V6, 1, and AVL for typical left bundle branch block morphologies, and I don't see any there either. And so this tells me that we don't have a bundle branch block. We don't have sinus P waves driving the rhythm and this is a wide complex rhythm, this must be a rhythm of ventricular origin. So what does that mean? So AIVR is a rhythm where there's some type of focus within the ventricles. We'll put it right here. And that focus can fire off. It gets a little bit excited. Usually when that happens, we get a very slow wave of depolarization across the ventricles. Why is it so slow? Well, remember that Usually, signal goes down this nice Hisperkinji system, right? These rapidly conducting highway system of the ventricles. But that doesn't happen in a ventricular rhythm. It actually, when it fires off, it's got to go from gap junction to gap junction, cell to cell, and it takes forever. So that means that the QRS is going to take longer to occur. It's going to widen, right? Because remember, x-axis is time. So it's going to take longer, it's going to take more time. And normally what's interesting is we think of the a ventricular ectopic focus usually doesn't occur unless it's a ventricular escape beat, right? So usually we think of these only occurring, these ventricular focuses that are firing off rhythmically in a ventricular escape fashion, right? Remember, like if we have a bad AV block, and we need an escape rhythm within the ventricles because nothing's getting to the ventricles. We get a ventricular escape. A ventricular escapes usually occur somewhere between 20 to 40 beats per minute. So this obviously is not a ventricular escape rhythm because this rhythm is occurring at 65 beats per minute. But we can explain anatomically that there is some focus within the ventricles causing this very slow, wide QRS complex, but it's happening a little faster than what we usually would say occurs from a ventricular focus. So that is why we would call this an accelerated, accelerated idioventricular rhythm, A-I-V-R, right? So remember, when you see these wide complex rhythms, you need to uh, really understand the physiology and explain why this is occurring. We know that this rhythm is not being driven by the atria because we've scanned through a lot of leads 
and looked for sinus or ectopic P waves to drive the rhythm. We've got a wide complex QR. I'm sorry, if you guys hear my dog, uh, we've got a dog downstairs that's whining at the door. Um, <laughs> it just started happening. Um, but sorry, so there's no P waves that are driving this rhythm. And I don't see any uh, morphology of the QRS complex that would explain a bundle branch block type of pattern. And so what's likely happening is we have this accelerated idioventricular rhythm that is driving our QRS complex for whatever reason. So sometimes it's just an ectopic focus, just like we have here, that's a little angry. Sometimes these rhythms can be very common after reperfusion therapy and myocardial infarctions. Um, they're typically, AIVR is typically benign, uh, uh, but there are uh, occasional times clinically where um, it might be uh, inhibiting someone's quality of life, depending on the focus and the characteristics, um, meaning like the intrinsic rates. This one is occurring at a rate of 65 beats per minute. So um, I would imagine that if this individual uh, you know, got up and started running around, their sinus node could certainly take over this rhythm. But for now, it's not. So, because um, we have a ventricular rhythm that's driving this. So, I hope this helps. I hope that the rationale of going through, you know, the approach to a wide complex rhythm, right? This is really an approach to a wide complex QRS, a regular, regularly occurring wide complex QRS. And I um, hope this helps narrow it down to a ventricular uh, origin and then um, understanding why this is an accelerated ventricular rhythm and not a ventricular escape. So um, it really comes down to the rate. So hope that helps. If you have any questions, throw them into the comments. And if not, thanks for watching. We'll see you on tomorrow's uh, EKG video. Take care.